Good morning, uh, my name is Giacomo Torelli, and today I'm going to talk about a confinement and moisture dependent constitutive model for concrete subjected to high temperatures that I've developed for my PhD at the University of Manchester. I'm going to divide my talk into five main parts. So I'm going to start by introducing the industrial context of my research, and then I will outline the main features of the thermal expansion of concrete. Then in the third part, I will um, present a new confinement-dependent thermal strain model that I've developed for my PhD. And in the fourth part, I will present the extension of this model, which captures the effects of moisture. Then finally, um, I will draw some conclusions, some general conclusions from my work, and of course, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Okay, let's start from the industrial context. One of the biggest challenges we're facing today is climate change. And the main cause of climate change are man-made CO2 emissions. So if we see climate change as a serious threat, then we must pursue the reduction of global emissions. And two great opportunities that we have to do so in engineering are, first of all, to minimize the embodied energy in construction, so to minimize the energy that we use to build our structures, and also to develop low-carbon technologies for producing energy. So in order to um, minimize the embodied energy in concrete structures, we can operate both at a material and at a structural level. And from a structural point of view, what we can do is to minimize the volume of concrete that we use in our structures. And this, of course, leads to uh, the design and realization of slender elements, which are, by nature and definition, very much vulnerable to fire. And this is because of their relatively uh, small thermal mass. So the implication of this is that in order to achieve a low carbon design of concrete structures, we need to develop robust and reliable concrete material models for high temperatures. Now, the other great challenge and opportunity that we have is to develop low carbon technologies for producing energy. And these days, among these technologies, nuclear power plays a key role. And this is because of three main reasons. Because first of all, it is relatively well developed, it is reliable, and it is cost effective. But, however, and unfortunately, this is what the nuclear power plant may look like in the case of severe accidental conditions. So this is a picture of the Fukushima nuclear disaster of 2011, which clearly demonstrates the need for reliable and robust concrete material models for high temperatures in order to understand the behavior of these structures under accidental conditions, and therefore to contribute to safety and security of our society. So in order to do this, we need to understand the thermal expansion of concrete. So if we apply a thermal load to stress-free specimen, we usually measure a volumetric expansion, which we usually call free thermal strain. Now, if we apply the same thermal load to specimens subjected to constant compressive stress, we generally measure a different thermal expansion, and in particular, a smaller thermal expansion. And this is due to the development of an additional strain component in the direction of the load, which is usually referred to as load-induced thermal strain, so the component that I've uh, reported in red here. So my PhD research focused on understanding and modeling this particular strain component, let's load induced thermal strain. A review of the existing LITS experiments and models allowed to identify a main gap in the literature. In particular, I've seen the LITS is commonly modeled as independent of the stress confinement in the material and also independent of the moisture content of the material. While actually, experimental evidence shows the LITS significantly depends on these two parameters. And in particular, it grows with the confinement of the stress state and it grows with the moisture content of the material. So with this in mind, the objectives of my research were, first of all, to formulate a new concrete material model for high temperature that captures these uh, effects, so the effects of moisture content and confinement of the stress state on the high temperature uh, behavior of concrete, and then to apply this new concrete material model to a test case. In my case, I've applied it to uh, the assessment of a nuclear reactor subjected to accidental conditions. Okay, let's have a look at the confinement-dependent LITS model. The classic approach for extending uniaxial LITS curves to 3D is mathematically represented by this equation here um, that shows that LITS is a thermomechanical strain component. So it depends on the stress state through the term in green, and it depends on the temperature through the term in red. And this equation, this approach, this uh, modeling method, uh, is based on the superposition principle. So in other words, it is assumed that the effects of a multi-axial load 
equals the sum of the effects of each uniaxial load applied um, individually. But we've seen before the leads uh, depend significantly on the stress confinement, and therefore this approach is not generally um, legitimate. And for this reason, I've modified the classic approach by introducing a new um, coefficient that I call the confinement coefficient that depends on the triaxiality of the stress state and amplifies leads in the case of biaxial and triaxial compression. So we are capturing this triaxial effect. And according to this model, um, in line with experimental evidence, leads develops only in compression. As you can see here from um, the analytical formulation, leads depends on the negative projection of the stress tensor, meaning that we're just speaking the directions of compression. And also develops only during the first heating under compressive loads. Uh, this means that uh, leads is modeled in a way that is not recoverable on cooling or unloading. And this has been achieved through the introduction of an internal uh, state variable that I call Tmax, which stores the maximum temperature ever reached by the material. Okay, this modeling approach has been used to extend to 3D a polynomial leads model. And the main beauties of this model, so the main beauties of the polynomial model, are that first of all, it allows to describe leads independently of the free thermal stream. And also, it allows you to um, somehow follow the highly nonlinear behavior of leads for high temperatures. So this, that's the reason of the choice. So the model has been implemented and first of all, validated against experiments and specifically, I've modeled all the experiments available in the literature where specimens subjected to uniaxial, biaxial, and triaxial compression uh, were heated up to temperatures up to 500 degrees. In this slide, I reported the results expressed in terms of evolution of leads as a function of temperature for specimens subjected to biaxial compression and temperatures up to 500 degrees. So as you can see here, if we use the classic model, so let's have a look at the blue curve, we significantly underestimate the experimental uh, curve, so the experimental leads. While if we use a confinement dependent model, we have a very much better uh, prediction of the concrete behavior. And this is of course because we are in biaxial compression, so there is some degree uh, of confinement uh, that is captured in our model, but it's not captured in the classic model. So the model, uh, after being verified and validated, has been um, implemented uh, to assess the loss of pre-stress in a concrete nuclear reactor subjected to accidental conditions. So in this slide, I've reported a scheme of a vertical section of a nuclear reactor. And as you can see, the reactor is essentially um, a container which is designed to hold the gas coolant, whose temperature for service conditions is about 600 degrees, while the temperature of concrete is kept constant at about 50 degrees uh, by means of a cooling pipe system. Now, in the case of accidental conditions, so for example, in the case of a fault of the cooling pipe system, the temperature of concrete could rise, theoretically, up to the temperature of the, uh, of the gas coolant, so theoretically up to 600 degrees. And this is the reason why it is terribly important to understand the behavior of concrete at high temperatures for the assessment of this particular type of structures. I've considered um, a typical Bessel geometry and I've studied, uh, studied, I've modeled a representative portion of it, considering a pre-stressing system uh, composed of eight vertical tendons and eight horizontal tendons. And the considered design scenario was the fault of the cooling system, which was modeled by applying a heating cooling cycle to the inner surface of the vessel. So you can see that the fault lasts for two days, and then we imagine uh, the fault to be fixed after two days and the temperature goes down. So in this slide, I've reported the results in terms of evolution of tension in cable number eight as a function of time. And I'm focusing on cable number eight because this is the closest cable to the inner surface, and therefore it's the cable that's interested the most by the fault condition, that's affected the most. As you can see, if no leads component um, is included in our model, then the overall effect of a heating cooling cycle is no loss in pretension. So let's have a look at the black curve. Now, if we use a confinement dependent model, the red curve, the overall effect of the heating cooling cycle is a um, significant loss in pretension, about 55% of the initial tension in the cable. And it's also interesting to see that if we use the classic model, a big part, a big portion of this tension drop is missed, uh, more than one third. 
So in conclusion, we can say that the triaxiality, the confinement coefficient eta that we introduced here is crucial to capture the actual behavior of concrete subjected to multi-axial conditions and high temperatures. And also that um, it's essential to include leads in concrete material models uh, to be used for the assessment of these particular structures. Now we've seen the confinement dependent model. Uh, let's have a look now at the extension of this model um, that includes the effects of the moisture. As we've mentioned earlier, um, experimental evidence shows that leads grows with the water content in the material. And in this slide, I've reported the qualitative development of leads as a function of temperature for concrete specimens having different initial water contents. Uh, in particular, a dry specimen, so let's imagine no free water to evaporate, and uh, a wet specimen, so a specimen having a given amount of water. As you can see, the wet specimen develops more leads and the difference between these two curves mostly develops within the first 150 degrees, which is the, the region, the uh, temperature range, where concrete drying occurs. So leads, it's clearly connected, influenced by, uh, by the drying process of the material at high temperatures. And with this in mind, I formulated a new um, moisture-dependent leads model, where leads is seen as the sum of two main contribution. A uh, moisture-independent component, which I called pure leads, so this is essentially the model that we've seen before, the confinement-dependent model, and an additional strain component, which is moisture-dependent, which I called transient drying creep, which captures the effects of the drying on the load induced thermal strain. And similarly, I've defined a moisture-dependent free thermal strain model, where the free thermal strain is seen as the sum of three contributions, so pure uh, free thermal strain, that's how I called it, a moisture independent strain component. This is the classic uh, free thermal strain model that we use for any engineering material. A moisture dependent component that I call transient shrinkage, which accounts for the effects of drying on the free thermal strain of the material. And then an additional moisture dependent component, which I call transient swelling, which accounts for the internal movement of water from micropoles to macropoles. So the micro diffusion of water, um, how this affects the macroscopic uh, behavior of concrete. So again, the model has been validated against experiments. We've seen that it's perfectly capable of capturing the evolution of leads for various uh, initial water contents. And it's been applied to the same test case. Uh, so the loss of, uh, evaluating the loss of pre-stress in a nuclear reactor, but this time I was considering a long-term fault. So instead of just two days, I was considering two weeks, 14 days of fault. Again, here I've reported the results in terms of evolution of tension in cable number eight as a function uh, of time. And we can see again that if we use our moisture dependent model, we obtain a significant tension drop. We need to keep in mind this is a local effect. It's just the first cable, so the closest cable to the inner surface, uh, but it's, it's an important uh, effect, tension drop. And again, if we use the classic model, so if we disregard the uh, moisture dependency of these, of these strains, then again, we miss a big part of this tension drop, about 10%. So in conclusion, we can say that the moisture dependency uh, of the thermal strains is crucial to accurately capture and model and understand the behavior of concrete at high temperatures. And that if we don't consider this feature in our models, then we may end up with non-conservative uh, results. Okay, let's move on to the general conclusions of this work. From a scientific point of view, the fundamental contribution to knowledge uh, of this work is the formulation of a new concrete material models for high temperature um, that um, accounts for the effects of confinement of the stress state and moisture content of the material. This model has been uh, disseminated through a number of publications, so if you wish to know more, uh, you can refer to these references here. Now, from an industrial perspective, uh, this model represents a reliable tool for the assessment of high um, as of structures subjected to high temperatures. And this in turn um, enables the design of low carbon structures so we can confidently design slender members and slender elements. And of course it represents a key contribution to safety and security of society. Finally, the uh, model has been implemented in the official version of Mfront. Mfront is an open source software it is an extension for various finite element packages, such as Abacus, with 100 million users. 
and this represents a key uh, direct and tangible contribution uh, and impact on the engineering community. Uh, the model is available online uh, freely. You can download it from the link that I reported in this slide. And if you wish to have some uh, help in downloading it or uh, using it, you, you need some support or you're just interested in knowing more, uh, just please do get in touch. I'm very, very happy to, to help out with it. Thank you for your time.